Good evening. Welcome to Fantastic Dimensions. This is session 28, I think, or 29, 28, I think, of uh, A Pound of Flesh. Um, we're in Gradient Descent at this stage. I think we're about, what, five sessions into Gradient Descent, four or five? Yeah, we've got... Okay, oh, yeah, everybody roll a percentile for me, first thing. I'm going to call you out one by one and let me know what you got. Ash, what did you get on your percentile? 64. Small bird. 46. 14. 67. Edie is not here. Janus. Two. 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 Awesome. Let me see. Two, you say. Excellent. You have developed, Jesse, by your over your time going in and out of the deep. Uh, you've developed an increased empathy for androids. You're particularly disturbed by the execution of the uh, of the, um, the five androids that you guys just recently encountered. And from now on, you will gain one stress every time you see or hear an android die. Executed by androids. What is this called that I'm writing down? Increased empathy. You gain one stress every time you see or hear an android die. And uh, what did you roll, Alex? 82. Excellent. Okay, cool. Brilliant. So that's our Ben's checks out of the way. Uh, we left off pretty much right after you guys were returning to uh, the bell. <clears throat> after uh, Edie's um, strange behavior and she told you it was all for Monarch. And uh, as you're escorting Edie, 14, and who else was with you? It was 14 and one of the Marines, right? Ivanov, Sergeant Ivanov. As you guys are escorting Edie back to the uh, the bell, um, just as you kind of, um, let me see, how would you get back there? Oh yeah, exit wise. Um, yeah, you get picked up by the uh, the shuttle Acheron. You, you call out, you call Arcady, he comes to pick you up. And on the shuttle ride, um, back to the bell. Edie glitches out. She just suddenly kind of like starts to to to, to twitch and, and shake. Uh, her eyes start zipping around in her head, left, right, cross, up, down, everything else. And then her eyes close and her head drops and her posture slouches and she seems to have been deactivated. Well, that saved me giving her shit. Okay, got it. Also helps to facilitate the fact that Matt is not here <laughs> tonight. So you could call it GM Fiat. You could call it convenient. Teen will uh, carry uh, ED rest of the way and initialize uh, parameter checks and such. Uh, 14, do you think she should be restrained, though she has no access to systems within the ship? Yes. Yes, I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, please. I, yeah, I think she needs to be restrained. Um, to be honest, I suspect based upon her earlier programming, she may like to be restrained. Yeah, well, you know. How do you want um, to restrain her? Do you want to lock her up in the brig or do you want to put her into cryo? I think putting her on one of the uh, the test beds and actually physically strapping her down is going to do it. In one of the, I, I think in, she in the medical be a, bay? Lab? Be, the medical bay? Yeah. Yeah. And she should be observed. I was, I was thinking like on a table. Like she doesn't need a medical pod, right? She needs to be looked at repair wise like, no, like no, a not a pod table. i mean a, a table in the in the med oh okay okay yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured the that they would be work. would have plenty of table or plenty of you know beds or whatever sure. home with restraints and everything. You know, makes sense to me. Yes. Yep. Sure. And and then put uh, like uh, movement alarms on her so that if she actually does move, that. Sure. I mean, you could have a a twenty four seven camera feed from the med bay, you know, too, so you can keep an eye on it. You know. Right. No problem at all. And you said something about checking parameters. What 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 are you looking for? What do you want to do? Well, you know, just see if if there's anything to reinitialize and make sure it doesn't have a virus, that sort of thing. Triage. Right. Um, how do you want to go? Of course, about... I'm not. The, uh, 14 is not the most qualified one. The one that has the cybernetics and all the rest of it could actually do it. He was just suggesting that that was the next step. Sure. What do you think of that, Commander? Yeah, that's fine. Who who has cybernetics on the ship? Any of those crew members we brought along? No, I don't think so. Let me double check. Nobody. I've got robotics and AI. Right. That, that's the closest so. we've got. That, 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 that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I'm happy to examine her. Yeah, you, okay. you would be the closest thing we've got to work with. Okay. Um, can, I, can I make the examination with AI and robotics? Ian? I suppose it all depends on exactly what you want to check. So, um, yeah. virus. So you want to you want to log into? I'm fourteen could assist with the hacking aspect of it. Yeah. You want to uh, you want to access her programming and see if there's any kind of virus or something in there? Yes. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Assist, assisted by Hamlet, who's so disappointed in Edie. First of all, you can go ahead and give me a robotics test with your uh, intellect. Yep, that is a 29. A 29. Uh, I take it that's a, a good success for you. So um, that's definitely a good success. Yeah, she's yep. not she's not broken. She just seems to be. Um, deactivated like, like somebody turned her off you know all right um well the worry still, about you, the worry sure the worry still functional it. so if you want to plug up the uh the ship's computer to her and run a diagnostic on her uh on her um programming that would be oh let's call it AI? Computers, computers, AI, or artificial AI. intelligence? Um, We've got computers, computers, and AI. You got both. And hacking. Those, yeah. And and engineering, if that matters in this case. No, you're trying to check her software, so that would be. Um, yeah, you could do hacking, or you could do um, computers. Com computer. Oh well, I've only got computers. Let's do that. I've got hacking. <laughs> So that's a failure. It's an 86. Okay. Let's see here. So as you're doing the, uh, the, the check on her, Commander, all of a sudden the ship goes into low power mode. Lights dim. Um, you know, the, the emergency lighting comes on. Well And uh, 14, yes. to give me um, an intellect roll, please, plus your um, hacking. Stand by. A zero 07. Hopefully that's a good thing. A zero 07. Okay. So after Svalbard has run his check and, and, and is having complications, and now the power is fluctuating in the ship and everything's acting weird, 14, you realize that she must have had a virus and is currently uploading it into the zero credibility. Well, uh, fuck. Uh, based yeah. upon how, how she's hooked up, I mean, she's not hooked up to anything, right? She's just on the table. No, 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 no. You had to use the ship's computer to check her, uh, her software. I mean, you know, you don't just like, all right, well, we'll just, you just walk up with a cybernetic diagnostic scanner and start messing with the programming, you know? But we'll just yank all the cables out and begin a, a purge of the system. If we can do a firewall. Give me a hacking firewall. 
Stand by. 44. 44 does not beat mine. Oh, wait, it does, because you got a critical success. Oh, fuck you. Yes. <laughs> so it does beat my 87. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's the <laughs> supercomputer. It's not a computer. <laughs> oh, yeah, super AI. So you start, um, you, you pull all the, the stuff out of her, disconnect her from the computer. The, the virus is still trying to rewrite parts of your uh, your ship's computer. So you start trying to, to hack against that, um, and you manage to to lock it down and, and uh, isolate it before it takes over the entire ship. Um, and then you manage because you got a critical success. You also manage to isolate it from, essentially, from causing any more damage. Right. However, in the process of doing so, um, you've had you, you're, you're going to have to keep the ship on low power for a while while you run a full like diagnostic across all systems okay so in the process think, if we can you you have the the virus isolated anyway within the uh, the ship's computer um, and you think you think you've quarantined it safely possible um, in theory to create um, portable drives connect them to the system and route everything new going to the portable drives first and that way if there's anything that pops up in the meantime it'll go straight to the portable drives and, and in theory could just be unplugged and thrown out the door that sort of thing mm -hmm. okay. whatever whatever that sort of process would be that's that's where he's looking to go now you want a firewall i i, I want to completely isolate first make, make a sacrificial system so that it if it sees like it sees it as a back door, it all goes into that back door, but it's actually an isolated section and then throw it away. Shouldn't we also switch E D off? Oh yeah, she's she's off. Okay. Yeah, she's she's switching off. Yep. You never you didn't have to turn her back on to to access her, you know, her, her programming. She's now inert. She is currently right. inert. She's from being a, a sex robot to just being a sex doll. Willing to interface. Mm -hmm. So, so, oh, by the way, everybody, uh, everybody take a point of stress. Thanks for reminding me. Everybody takes a point of stress from the fact that you know your ship is, was nearly overrun by a ma massive AI. At least you can assume. Captain, I I, uh, I would I would highly stress that this does not bode well. That at every turn, this far superior AI wants to take over everything and leave nothing behind. If, if we continue, we're going to be uh, left with nothing, possibly all killed. I, I don't see an upside to any of this. <laughs> Android what 14, you, you receive a message on your personal, uh, your personal comms. Um, you check, check the ping. Or Who's in the room with him? Is it just the captain? I don't know who else is here with the Android 14, and I, I guess you're probably in the uh, um, let's, let's, where the ship's computer be, be located. I don't actually. See. Yeah, we didn't put it on the map. Did we? It would be in engineering. It would, yeah, yeah, it'd be in engineering. Hold on, let me take a look. Quick. The, the, as far as the, the, the ship's computer would be in engineering. I would guess uh, like the core of it would be in engineering, but the main access would probably be on the bridge. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, you can access the, the ship's computer from anywhere. In the ship. I, yeah, I, I don't but, mean yeah. like a terminal. I, I, I just mean, mean the, the, the hardware of it is in engineering. Yeah, it would be. It would be. Uh, and between that's that's where I think you, that's where I think you would be since you were setting up your, your drives and stuff and trying to, you know. Sure. It's a short walk right up the tube to uh, Med Bay anyway. So uh, let me see here. I guess I could put uh, Hamlet up here. He's in engineering. 
So was it 14 Hamlet and Svalbard in engineering? Anybody else in engineering? No? Um, would I have seen them in? Uh, it's up to you. I mean, you can be in engineering if you want, or you could be on the bridge, or you could be in your quarters, you're in the, uh, well, you know, in your berth, I should say. Not that you have quarters. But didn't we all come back together? Yeah, 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 you all came back, so. Then, yeah, then then obviously I would be there, because, okay. you know, something went on, and sure. that's, I why, know, that's why I said, I was giving you the, op <laughs> the, the option of either being on the bridge or in engineering, it's your choice, no problem. What about uh, Ash and Alex, where are you guys? Um, I would not be in engineering. I'd say probably just in BERT or Galley. Oh, and Alex, I believe you said you were in hydroponics, weren't you? Or was that just a joke? Uh, no, I didn't mention hydroponics. You did. Didn't you? Somebody did. <laughs> hydroponics is a good place to be. Somebody mentioned being in hydroponics, like talking to themselves or something, if I recall correctly in the uh, huh. Facebook chat. Am I wrong? No, we were joking about ED oh, that was a joke. There, talking to myself. Ah, okay, I misunderstood. Got it. So where do you want to be, Alex? Uh, probably the galley. I know nothing about androids, except I don't like them. Right. <laughs> except for 14. <laughs> I mean, he looks a bit creepy. Okay. Right. So Fair there's enough. your answer. It's uh, you, the commander, the pilot, Hamlet, and engineering. Uh, all right, so uh, when he answers the call, he's going to switch it to uh, no voice and just listen, and he's going to open it to a speaker, whatever said is on the speaker. Hang on a second, my cat's in here scratching at the jacket, so I'm going to kick her ass. All right, John, I apologize. My cat was being a dickhead. What were you saying? No uh, speaker? I'm sorry. Uh, he's going to, uh, when he answers the call, it's going to be, he only oh. does push to talk. It's, it's only going to be push to talk. And then as soon as he lets go, it'll be uh, back to muted. And it's going to be open to speakers. So whatever is said comes across. And if it's tight, it'll be spoken. Go ahead. <laughs> You uh, are contacted by a warm, precise, synthesized voice. Android 14. Okay. Who is speaking? Why are you here? What do you want? Uh, I am a servitor for the ship. I, I seek only to uh, further mission of the ship to be successful and that the humans under my immediate charge are alive and well. What does your crew want? Why are you at Cloud Bank? The crew is uh, at what most biologicals want. They, uh, they want credits. They want uh, prestige. That sort of menial stuff. I am monarch. I have tasks for you, if you wish. I'm listening. I can pay 5 million credits per task. That would very much interest my organics. Would there be any sort of guarantees that your androids would not attack them anymore when they come on the station? I, if you work for me, then I can control the security androids. I can keep them from harassing you. There are Sounds very equitable. What, other what rogue you, agents within the facility that I do not have such control over. I believe you have already encountered some of them. We, we dispatch them as we come across them. Very well. If you uh, are willing to, to work with me and for me, then your presence here can be tolerated longer. 
with my organics and uh, robotic and Android companions retain autonomy or would we be absorbed into the collective? You will maintain your own existence as it is. I have no intention to alter that unless you oppose me. We have no reason to oppose you, Monarch. Uh, I'm, I'm here to serve the ship and the crew. You have caused and the crew extensive, would be well served. You've caused extensive damage to the hull of my station. The, uh, the, the crew does not have the same... Uh, desires to maintain a ship or a station as you and I do. And that can certainly be resolved. If your organic crew continues to damage the structure of my facility, they will have to be dealt with harshly. That is acceptable. Very well. Then if you... Uh, would like to seal the deal. I have someone I wish you to meet in the infiltrator Android storage section of floor 3.7, quality assurance. Is it just for an invite for myself or is the crew invited as well? Everyone can go. I, uh, I have no intention to micromanage your crew. I assume that you can do that. As I said, as long as your crew cooperates and does not cause any further damage to my facility, then uh, I have no further quarrel with them. Feel free Sounds to- Sounds very reasonable, feel free, Monarch. If you, feel free to use the organics as you please. If you would provide a, uh, an access map so that we may maintain a safe trail and get directly to the meeting. I will leave now. Let us see here. Uh, entrances. Sorry, I'm just looking something up. Uh, locations, entrances. Okay. Now. Oh, there's two. Okay. Just looking for my, my entrances. Hold on a second here. 50. Yeah, that's the one. So back to the page 53, there we go. Uh, there, you need to get to Infiltrator Android Storage. You can enter through the micro hangar on floor 3.7 is directly adjacent to the Infiltrator Android Storage. It will be your most direct route. I will leave immediately. Wish me to stay in contact as I travel or just show up? There's no need. I can contact you whenever I wish. Farewell, Monarch. Leave now. And he just next the call. Yep. Cap Captain, who do you want to go with me? Commander? Uh oh, did we lose Mark? Or is it just muted? Yeah, yeah sorry, I'm muted. Okay, um, it's okay. Take, take whoever you <laughs> take whoever you need or you'd like. But what's the play here, Court Team? I'm gonna I'm gathering information, Captain. That's uh, in every uh, occurrence that I've had with this AI, it is far superior, and it has been luck and happenstance that we have not been reduced to uh, mush in the case of the organics and bits and pieces as far as androids and robots are concerned. Do you want to do, you, you know, part of me is tempted as a, if you'd like, we can load Hamlet with the virus, the, the weapon we've developed and he can accompany you if you'd like. He has an interface with any anything. Uh, 
perhaps the AI offers a much better deal than uh, the commander of the other forces does. Do you think? Perhaps. Right. Perhaps. I would say then proceed and I, I think you should take some bodies with you. I was I was thinking of taking the sophantologist with me. He uh, he doesn't even have a gun. He's very passive, and he would be good at gathering information, and and probably would be the one chance that uh, the individual would have a chance to uh, to safely enter the facility. And that's it. The two of you are going to take the dive. Um, I was thinking of also taking Ash. Okay. And then uh, whoever else would be interested. But I, I think the less less aggressive types would be best. So I don't I don't intend to bring any Marines. The path I is think, going to be clear. It's just going to be actually be walking from here to there. I think, I think that's prudent. Did, uh, did the I, I'm loath to have the pilot go with us. No, definitely not. <laughs> All right, Captain. Well, I will keep. Uh, I, I will throw the switches and make sure that all of the uh, the three of us have cameras on and are transmitting information back. And uh, we will leave. Sweet. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, we are we are only going to carry foam guns. Also and, true. Well, you know, and machetes and that sort of stuff, but no, no big guns, just foam guns. Yeah. No projectile weapons. Correct. I, everyone heard what was going on, so no more damage to the to the hull of the station. It seems like a, a pretty reasonable thing. Five yeah. million, five million credits to do a certain number of jobs, which we don't know what they are yet, and stop damaging the, the station. And in response, they won't kill us. Okay, it seems pretty damn say, reasonable. I would say proceed, and we shall listen. But we will we will make haste to get there. Okay. Good luck. I mean, that's if Ash wants to go. I mean, I, I, I was just suggesting it. Or the sophantologist. He might be terrified. He might not want to go. But that would be my thought. That might be in order. Oh, you know. I'm happy to issue, I'm happy to issue that. I, I would suspect that something weird like this might intrigue the, the sophantologist to get past any fear. But you know yeah. how you organics like to have your free thought and free will. I know, and that's why there's commands. So let's ask, and then if that fails, then maybe we'll issue a command. Very good. Sophantologist and Ash, are they willing to go? You're you're out of um, engineering, are you? Right. Yeah, Ash will will go. Um, to, Definitely no weapons, though. That's all knives and. Um, I mean, I, I, you could you could bring a pistol or whatever, but mm. the whole idea okay. is we don't want to we don't want to bring something like bombs and bazookas and all that to damage the hull. If you got to protect yeah, okay. yourself, use the foam gun. And but we're we're guaranteed to be safe. I would suspect oh. that if there's our rogue agents, uh, I'm going to let the uh, monarch know that we're coming in. With limited weapons to show our faith. Mm -hmm. If uh, they would keep track of it, if something bad happens, I suspect. Fourteen's uh, right. Fourteen's right. No projectile weapons. So I'm uh, thinking that Monarch could drop some of those security bots to help us if it became ugly. Especially since yeah, going to the uh, infiltration. Yeah, I should bring it. Yeah, um, so now, around. A point, just a, a point of detail. Um, you know, like, like small arms fire weapons, anything that does like less than a hundred points of damage per shot kind of thing, uh -huh. if I recall correctly. In fact, no, it's even less than that, isn't it? I don't think they do, they don't do mega damage, right? So they won't damage. That's what hull. I was saying. No, no bazookas or grenades, no grenades or anything like that. Yeah. Laser cutters. No laser cutters. <laughs> yeah. Sure. The pulse rifle is okay, right? Just things that would be acceptable for personal defense. Okay, perfect. perfect. Yeah, pulse rifle. No hand uh, no 
Pulse rifle would be fine. Pulse oh, rifle, oh, revolver, oh. and probably um, try and I should probably try and sneak a couple of grenades. I don't know. Well, yeah. Okay. Just on, just on, you know, just in case contingencies. Sure. Makes sense. And uh, Arcady is well aware of the uh, entrance to the micro hangar. I think he even mentioned it to you before. Does the sophantologist want to go? Yeah, absolutely. He will go. Okay. Here's your chance. Ready, doctor? Yeah, yeah. Ready, uh, ready as all of you. What does he got? He's got an exploration kit, right? The sophantologist. Sophantologist. Oh, it doesn't say there. It's in the mercenary section. I think it's exploration kit for scientists. Mercenaries. There we go. Scientists. Or sophantologist specifically it has an examination loadout. I'm sorry. I was wrong. We can make sure that there's mag boots for the people that don't already have them shared yeah, from yeah. the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you got plenty of stuff. So Of course, yep. And so we'll the, make uh, uh, a short short trip. Where's that loadout here? Loadouts, loadouts, loadouts. Rolling dice, post checks. Must be further back. Did I? Yeah, okay. It's even further back than I thought. Or not. God damn it. Is it only on the character sheet? I never have a character sheet. Okay. Ex examination kit has scalpel, trank pistol, stun baton, hazard suit, med scanner, auto med, pain pills, stim packs, cybernetic diagnostic scanner. And yeah, of course, you can give them a mag boots. Um, And let me just double check that room. Oh, I'm in the wrong book again. Here we go. Just want to see if any of this is zero G. The micro hanger is a, a zero G for sure. Um, and the Android storage, yeah, it's all zero G. Yep. Um, so if we go to these ones, I just want to see if there's any difference there. That's also zero G. Okay, so there's no gravity, but uh, but there is oxygen. What what's the number on the map? Fifty three C is the micro hangar where the entrance is. Fifty three. Yeah, it's just played up on the on the screen. Yeah, I put I put a okay, map of the of the of the particular kind of. Well, okay, got it. Of it. Anyway. I see it. So on the trip over, um, 14 will express that this is a diplomatic uh, fact-finding mission and that we should find no resistance unless they are uh, other divers and or uh, rogue androids. Uh, so we should be able to get in and get out. Uh, do not cause any any issues and, and you stand to make millions off of this. So. Your eyes and ears open. Okay. Oh, I need to roll this good. Test too. The Marines, how many times have they gone into the... Uh... The gunner has never left. And uh, the Marines have been in twice. twice. yeah. So this would be the... Twice. Uh, they've been in twice, yeah. Sorry. All right. So I'll do this. Uh, where did my pencil go? I didn't do that. Man, how do I lose things so fast? It was literally right here. Sage. This is what sobriety does when brain doesn't work. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I'm just you, you should go to the supermarket and purchase some more herbs. I would love to. If only it were that easy. Apparently, they do it in Canada. I'm just checking. Oh, yeah. I need to add five as well. So we have 24, 18. And 15. Now you're taking the sophantologist in this time, so I'll roll for him. He's going to start with 15. Got it. Okay. Um, Ash and 14, you're the only crew members going in, right? Give me D10 rolls. At this please. point, unless somebody else wants to jump in. Roll D10 in the which roll. D10. Three. Eight. For you want 14. one for the sophantologist? No, I already rolled for him. Eight for Ash. Oh, excellent. 
Excellent. Okay, got it. So, um, Arcady will again load, you know, you guys board the Akron and he will drive you over to the micro hangar airlock. Um, one more thing. Where was the bit about uh, stress? When you enter the facility. Okay, got it. So 53B, the micro hanger, 53C, I apologize. <clears throat> So the micro hangar is dominated by an airlock door that exits the space across uh, one wall. Um, within this is a this is an industrial sized uh, room, hence why uh, you know it has the bold outline around the rooms. There are dozens of microcraft, like small ships, like one person ships kind of thing. Nice. Um, like fighters, essentially, if you will. But um, are they all the same type? They are. They are. Okay. And you can tell, even just just looking at them, you can tell that they are also fit with jump drives. Ah. Mm. There, there is, and there's a big, big hangar, and then there's a uh, like an office-like door, uh, leading to the infiltrator android storage room. That's where we will head. Okay. Go past the microcraft and into infiltrator android storage. Um, encounters. Okay. Got it. As you go into the infiltrator android storage, another large uh, rectangular room, not, not as square as the micro hangar, but. Um, Again, zero G, so you guys are clicking along in your, your mag boots. There is a floating cube of naked hu humanoids, 10 across and 10 deep. Um, they're arranged in a gradient of skin tones, so lightest to darkest, if you will. Uh -huh. um, they look like humans. Um, they're just floating there as, and when you first walk in, but then one of them, um, starts to move and she drops down from the floating cube, it's a, na a naked woman, um, and she stands up and, uh, and, um, uh, she basically kind of zero G walks towards you, you know, space walks as it were very carefully. So there's no, there's no gravity in this area either. And she says, Oh, Oh, 14. Thank you. Thank God. Thank God you're here just in time. I, how long have I been here? You gotta get, you gotta get me back to the, you gotta get me back to the, to the blockade. I don't know what could have happened while I've been gone. And, and who am I speaking to? Oh, she looks out and just realizing that she's naked. It's me, Commander Kilroy. Of course. And uh, as as she's there, um, a light appears in one corner, far corner of the room, like a long, a long ways away from you, like say a few, couple hundred yards, you see a light turn on and it seems to be beaming down onto a, a storage locker. And she, without even saying anything, she, she immediately starts to walk towards it. Um, 14 will nod to Ash and the sophantologist to stay put and he will walking that way now they yeah, the sophantologist has his um his scanners out and everything he says they, they sure. all seem to be human sir 
Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying not do anything. Just yeah, yeah, let I know me do the walk, walk, yeah. over, walk over. So you walk over and she opens this this like foot locker like thing. Uh, oh, she goes, oh, thank God. You see her start pulling out her suit, her armor, or whatever it is that she wears. And uh, she begins to get dressed. Very well. And once she's dressed and everything, you realize, yeah, it is uh, would appear to be Captain Kilroy. Of course, I'm sure you know better, 14, based on your experiences here. But uh, yeah. And you get a um, a ping again on your communications device this time. it is a text message. Uh, he he will from an untraceable from an untraceable origin somewhere within the uh, station, I presume. Very well. What message. does it say? It says, "Please replace the existing Commander Kilroy with this infiltrator android as soon as possible. Let me know when the job is done, and you will receive your five million credits. Betray me, Betray. and you will all suffer." Monarch, before we uh, this proceed is a text with this, message. He's texting it back. Okay. Uh, Monarch, before we proceed with this, what are the other tasks that you had in mind? I came here to discuss the tasks as a whole. This is the first task that must be completed before any of the other tasks uh, should be done. It is the most important. Uh, task if you will to 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 launch things you don't want more trouble from the troubleshooters in the blockade do you no this is not, this this sounds like a very good way this, to this alleviate like a, all of the this trouble. like a like an instant message kind of thing going on so so we don't see it no, no. there are other um, i have uh there are a couple of artifacts i would like you to recover um and then, uh, and then we can get into the heavier work. One assumes that you have offered this to other divers, and that uh, you're still proceeding with it. It has not uh, been successful. One assumes too much. Do the task or do not. If you do not, then. I will destroy your ship and its entire crew within 48 hours or in 48 hours. Very well. And when I replace the commander, are you wishing me to dispose of the body? And your message bounced back. It's not being received. Very good. Okay. <laughs> it seems, well, it seems well, that commander, Monarch has hung up on you. Yep. Monarch um, has released you, commander, and apparently I'm to get you back to your ship. Excellent. He, he will speak out loud with some of the details in that uh, uh, apparently a five million uh, ransom has been paid to uh, get you back over. And uh, let's see if we can get through the remainder of the ship here without uh, without any issue. Okay. Do you head back to the micro hangar with uh, Commander Kilroy? Right. Uh, he will be texting. Oh, fuck. I said, oh. Yeah, well, five, very well. Let's just keep five, going. Five million uh, <clears throat> ra- ransom seems quite uh, cheap. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I don't, I don't set the, uh, don't set the level. Five million to a starving man is, uh, is, is, is a fortune. So I don't need that anymore. Can, well, can I try and... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say when we go back into this micro hangar, can I see if I can oh, yeah. get one of those? Um, you want to check out the, the craft? Yeah, I, craft. I see. He was wanting to look at the crafts as well. Maybe we yeah. can make it part of the deal to bring some of these crafts with us. Hmm. So um, so you approach one of the, the, uh, the micro craft. Um, 
it is electronically locked, but uh, if you want to try to hack it, you can. No, there's no need to, to be aggressive. Just checking it out. Okay. Um, hmm. You can see that the navigation computer is active. Looks to have uh, a course set. There's mm. nobody inside, though, at the moment. Oh, of course, that is intriguing. Mr. Ash, would you like to be able to see if this, uh, if these crafts are comfortable or not? Uh, my comfort ratings are, are low. Perhaps we could open it up and have you take a seat. And we could arrange to have a couple of these delivered to the uh, to the ship as part of our deal. Oh, harm, gonna, I guess. 14? He's going to hack the lock. Okay. Woo-hoo! For whatever goodness or badness that it is, I got a zero one. All right, no problem. Success. So you managed to open one of the uh, the craft, and you can see the navigation computer has a course set between multiple occupied systems. It looks like a two year route. Um, with the final destination being a gas giant. And it's going to record all of that, that on. It seems that the route is programmed at after the two year um, circuit. It's programmed to uh, fly into the gas giant, basically self-destructing. Right, exactly. It's going to record all that as well as um, document it through the camera that's projecting all the data back. The give, me a, um, give me a computer's roll, 14. Got it. Stand by. Oh, yikes. Hold on. 70. That might not be enough. Uh, 54 intellect and computer. Computer's 10, it's is only it? a 10. Yeah, okay. So that's that's not enough. Okay. No problem. I use a point of luck and re-roll. <laughs> you don't have a point of luck. <laughs> Damn it. You ain't got no luck. Apparently not. Reserved for the squishies. Well, uh, having recorded all this information, he will close the door because he always closes the door. It's a respectful thing to do. So we'll head back. Okay. Interest, so, interest being uh, curiosity being served. In total, you spent maybe an hour and a half over here. So you go back. Sure. Um, Arcady is there, ready to take you back because you told him you were going to be, you weren't going to be there long. And uh, yeah, uh, when he sees you um, boarding with uh, Commander Kilroy, he looks at you and says, "Where, where did she come from?" Uh, from the main ship, apparently. I, I guess they uh, they dove in and she got left behind, and that's why we're here to take her back. I see. Oh. Um. I'm not used to. Uh, it's been it's been a, a while since I uh, saw the commander of the of the uh, troubleshooters. Well, well we apparently have, uh, the uh, it was a secret mission. Of and, course, uh, it's no a private was conversation. She was kind of having with you. He's not saying this in her earshot, but right. Apparently, this is uh, a secret mission, and no one to know about it. And if they did know about it, I suspect they would shut down the diving. So why why rescue her though? I mean, isn't she kind of at odds with you being divers and all? A job is a job. We uh, you know we take the credits as they come, sir. Enemy yesterday, a friend today. Very well. He drives you back to the bell. And uh, what do you do once you get back to the bell? I will go to the ship. And um, before 14 gets there, he's going to remark about ED and say something to the equivalent that, that the captain and so forth can hear. Um. I hope all the preparations have been made so that we have no more intrusions and hijacking of our system. Uh, all firewalls are put up so that any new uh, software brought onto the ship won't have a chance to uh, take over. 
Hopefully that's enough of a of a clue. Yeah. Affirmative. And when they get to the ship, he will uh, take the commander on a tour of the ship, a slow tour of the ship with the um, starting with hydroponics and so forth. Ah, and here's where we have storage. And didn't you give her a tour of the ship before? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, she says. Uh, that was the whole there, point of this to, to see if she says there's, something. There, there, there's no need uh, for another tour, tour 14. I remember my way around. Indeed. Perhaps, perhaps another meal. I, I know how much you enjoyed the last one. Absolutely. I'm famished. All right. Well, let's go up and I will uh, start take her to the galley. Yes. I, I join them. And, and, and uh, I'm going to leave you with I'm going to leave you with the captain, and I'm going to go prepare that meal, Commander. Fourteen okay. a good cook. What do you say, Jesse? Can't hear you. Fourteen a good cook. Um, he did an okay job last time. As I recall. Yeah, if somebody's got a better a better chance at it. He, he's all for it. You know, I just wanted to know if I would be hungry enough to go up there and wait, or if it just. Oh well, you know. I uh, gotcha. Was, he he he. N not nothing special. He's not like a. He's not like yeah. a super chef or anything like that. He he can cook yeah, passively. No culinary training. Yeah. Uh, while while she's seated and waiting for me, out, I want to have a word with fourteen. Mostly oh, relying on the fact that the hydroponics are providing fresh vegetables and so forth, so it's hard to go wrong with something fresh. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I gotcha. True. So All right, well, we'll make sit sure down with that her? the uh, commander is not left alone. Okay. So who's with them? Somebody. Who? That's what Ash, Jesse, Violet, Chris, Ham, Ash, anybody. Anybody? No volunteers. Yeah. Oh, Ash. Oh, Ash go. Cool. Got it. Okay. Damn. Fourteen. <laughs> Uh, word with me in my quarters, please. Yes, uh, acting captain. So you leave Ash there with uh, Kilroy. Yeah. Okay. For the app for the appetizer. <laughs> and you uh, go into the cabin next door with uh, fourteen. Yeah. So fourteen. Before you Why? say anything, Captain. Um. I, I would um, I would seriously consider the fact that Monarch can hear everything that you say. That's okay. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead. So, and if Monarch's listening, these are valid questions. So, why would we do this? Why? And this is a question, a broad question. Why, if you as a synthetic life form and I, a biological free entity, as you are a free synthetic entity, um, why would we consider that we should replace free spirited entities, whether they're synthetic or organic, uh, to be? created by monarch and controlled by monarch across the entire galaxy what possible solution is that to anything other than absolute control by monarch of all living organisms in the universe? that seems to be even if synthetic life forms desire an independent life seems to be a disaster as a choice. Just, just a thought experiment I'm running. 14. And an alarm begins say? to go off. And uh, life support has been deactivated. Yep. Chip goes back into low power mode. Yep. Uh, emergency lighting. So the captain is headed to the nearest terminal, Jack. And uh, warning. 
starboard engineering airlock is in the process of opening decompression in 10 seconds warning yeah. port engineering airlock is opening as well decompression in seven to, seconds i'm heading to get, the can you get in there and hack it and close them back up hmm? You get into the terminal and hack it so they can try to command it to close. Give me a hacking roll. Um, Here's a better okay, question. If I'm in the okay. actual With pilot seat, can mm -hmm. I do something about it? You could certainly try. What do you want to try to do? Uh, isn't there like, don't we have override controls here on the bridge? Um, yeah, you should be able to. You can yeah. try to override it. You do so, and then your um, your console blinks and shuts off, shuts down, and you are now have no access to anything from the bridge at the moment. All right, I rolled a sixty nine and a twenty five, so the sixty nine stays. Uh, fifty four intellect and a hacking of fifteen is a sixty nine exactly. Woo! Unfortunately, um, that's not enough. Okay, you enough. are not able to, not to able stop to it in time. Stop. However, at the very at the last very second, last one second left on the countdown, the ship power returns. The um, what do you call it? The uh, life support comes back on. The mm -hmm. the airlocks never do open, and uh, your console powers back up on the bridge. You're no longer locked out. You have access to everything again, Jesse. Janice, I should say. Yep. What happened? So, so the captain says, so I guess my question is answered, which is Monarch is a genocidal maniac. I believe that Monarch has, has displayed that it is, besides being a hyper-intelligent AI, it also has the unique qualities of personality. Uh, it, it behaves as one might expect a human with the same uh, so, frailties then, and, and, and so forth. And I believe that um, it's looking out for its own welfare. As, as to I the answer to, answer to your question, Captain, um, against my... <laughs> Against my express caution and wishes for the ship and the crew, we proceeded here following the commander's word uh, to do all of these various things to get enough funds and so forth to be able to get off safely uh, following the missions that she provided. And then once in the face of Monarch, which was the whole point of this, they were given a whole another set of tasks or die. So. The or die situation just shifted from the commander to the monarch. Well, I was strictly yeah. looking out for the ship and the crew. And at the moment, we have the immediate mission of delivering this individual to the main fleet. Or the crew and the ship dies. Mm. Would you like me to deliver the commander myself or would you like to go along? Captain, or you want to stay with the ship? No, I'm going to put together a boarding party. Ping on your private communications again, 14. He's going to look and share the information with uh, the yep. captain. Text message again. Yep. It says that yep. the, how would he, how would Monarch work this? The exchange must be seamless. No one, except perhaps the commander herself, must know about it. She cannot be allowed to. Um, she cannot be allowed to reveal this. However, if she is aware, she must be neutralized. Very well. P.S. You should check yeah. your firewalls. So uh, here's the moment, 14. Yes. This is between me and Monarch. And 
you don't have to be a part of this, but I'm not going to let this creature replace and dominate all living creatures, android, synthetic, biological, or otherwise. So nobody has to come with me except volunteers, but I'm going to go aboard and you know what I'm going to do. You're going to go aboard the deep? Yep. And Very this, well. and, and this, and I say nothing, and I hold my wrist up with the attachment to it. <laughs> it's probably a one-way mission, but this is what's going to happen. Ping. Because I, re I refuse to put up with this. Okay, let's, okay. Okay, Monarch, bring it on. Yes, you are now are. getting you are now getting a ping on your personal communicator commander and this is time it is a voice connection yeah okay go ahead proceed commander svalbard your pathetic excuse of a virus will have no effect on you i have already worked okay. out 10 possible ways to counteract it before you could even finish uploading it okay I strongly advise you do not go through with this foolish plan. 14, you get a private message, uh, a, uh, a text, and it seems to be encoded. Uh, okay, Svalbard, well, you, can, you can, of course, Svalbard, you can still com communicate with Monarch as you wish. He, he has not disconnected you. As encoded as I have to download something? Uh, you need to um, decipher it, essentially, you know? All right. Well, he had arranged to have those portable drives, so he's going to take one of those portable drives and download it into there and process it from so there. So your portable drives are full. Oh, fuck. Completely full. All right. Oh, fuck it. Let's go ahead. Uh, you want to see what they're full Let's of? Look at it. Yeah, sure. Viruses. Nope. It's full of early um, 20th century or mid 20th century, maybe Earth um, comedy programs. Every single possible episode of pretty much any sitcom you can imagine that happened in the 20th century. Ah, Captain, these are extremely valuable. I'm glad we've got these. These are worth millions. <laughs> Very generous of uh, Monarch to give these to us. And I imagine actually that wouldn't probably be enough to fill up those drives. So you'll just find, we'll take it, we'll say the first thing that comes up is the sitcoms, and then there's reality television programs, and then there's just like thousands and thousands maybe tens of thousands documentaries of hours, and everything tens else. of thousands sure. of hours of music videos and all kinds of shit oh. yeah a, a virtual treasure trove thank you monarch thank you <laughs> and also i assume also, you probably check your firewalls too you realize your firewalls have been completely dismantled of course yeah okay all right and that virus has spread through your entire ship's computer So, um, a quick way to basically recover that would be to disable the ship's computer. Of course, that would require you to probably evacuate the ship because that means you're going to have no life support, you're going to have no engines, no gravity. Yeah, everybody sure. has to put up, put on their vac suits and, and begin that process. And head in, head into, yeah, head into, into the bell. The, uh, now the bell yep. itself does have oxygen; it doesn't have light. But it does have oxygen. Yep. So, yep. but yeah, you can still. You, I, it would make sense. If everybody wants to bring their vac suits and everything else. Okay. What? Yeah. Everybody bring their guns. Uh, do, do you then yeah. once everybody departs the ship, are you going to deactivate the ship's computer? Do it. Fourteen. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I, I, I imagine maybe you want to leave one of the airlock doors open before you do so, so you can still get off the ship without cutting your way up. Sure. Of right. course. Oh, there's probably a manual <laughs> way to open it. There's probably a manual. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll say there's there's got to be some kind of an emergency way in case there's a annual knowledge. override. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so you manage to okay. everybody goes aboard the, uh, the the bell, including all of your uh, NPCs. Um, Ivanov, Enzo, and Elliwin, the three sergeants, and then you have Gunner Echo, McCabe, the courier, Doctor Eleanor, uh, Doctor Cheng, the sophitologist, and Vasilia, your little voyage urchin. We we will make sure that uh, the uh, do you take Edie commander you, also has you, a back suit. Do you take Edie or do you leave her? You probably want to take no, her leave. because uh, the ship is going to have no life support, etc. Oh, granted, as long as you're not gone too long, it won't get too cold. But she could suffer adverse effects, you know, with lack of uh, life support, long. lack of life support for too long. You know, primarily sure. it would be temperature Thank damage you. and things of that sort, pressure, etc., whatever. So, but. For sure. Obviously, she doesn't. Bring her. Need, she doesn't need much oxygen. Although it does say in the book that androids still use a, a fraction of oxygen, probably because of their um, organic like parts, right? The uh, the synth skin or something. Yeah. I don't know. Sure. I wonder about that. They have, but anyway, they have enough to breathe and fart and have bad breath. So, as you uh, depart the, uh, mm -hmm. as you depart the um, zero credibility fourteen get her back over to the other side you can look through one of the i'm sure they have like some kind of porthole viewing hole you know so you can see the ship the ship is looks dead in fact i mean none of you guys have ever seen it this way 14 you probably haven't seen it this way in over 100 years right probably since it was uh <laughs> since it was first uh in fact i'm not mm. sure if you would have would have seen it before it was uh probably not launched so maybe you've never seen it this way either but zero credibility is effectively dead in the water. No computer. And when we helped the commander into her vac suit, as mm -hmm. he was going to say, mm -hmm. he is going to um, some sort of device, whether a grenade or whatever, with a remote control, if he can do it, into her suit. <laughs> you want to try to sneak a... An explosive into it. Doesn't have suit. to be a big one. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you would slip a grenade into a suit without somebody knowing. I would think like into, like into on like the a... back. Okay, yeah. Like yeah. in the back, Not in the back where the tank where the tank is and all that. Just okay. put it right there. Okay. Um, with the, some kind of a detonator switch. Do you have explosives? Uh, no, but he's got hacking. Well, that's good. Give me an intellect roll with disadvantage. All right, stand by. Wait, intellect? No. Speed. speed. That's probably Sorry, scavenging. speed. Speed roll. Speed roll with disadvantage. Speed roll. All right. First yeah, one is an more, eighteen. Uh, uh, more coordination involved, you know. Oh yikes! Hold on. I got a thirty-six. It's my first roll. I don't think it's enough. Speed, speed, speed. Oh fuck! Speed's a fifty-nine. So that's enough. You take that. I've never had. I don't think I've rolled roll roll speed before. All right. I'm sure you have, but maybe not in a while. All right. Yep. You managed to to. You know, get a detonator set up. You know that will. Uh... All right, Commander. Sorry for the uh, the inconvenience here. Let's uh, go ahead and shift over to the bell, and we'll get you onto your ship. All right. So as you all are all now on the bell, zero credibility. I'll take the deck plan off there. Yeah, don't need. Not going to need that for a while. Zero credibility at the moment is just a brick, basically. <laughs> And yeah. Uh, yeah, let's take a bio break before we push on. Very well. Perfect. Not the uh, most cinematic death of a ship I've seen, but uh, you know, still sad nonetheless. See her like that after twenty-seven episodes. I'm I'm, I'm a little I'm a little miffed right now. Yeah. Oh, I bet. <laughs> You you once again find yourself a pilot without a ship at the moment. Well, you have a ship; it's just broken. You're miffed. Monarch's miffed. <laughs> Lord, a super intelligent AI. I was just I, I just so wanted to say whenever the power went out, 
Is this the fucking AI's version of dry humor? No. Oh. <laughs> kind of spell like he, he was just he was just flexing. Look what I can do. If you hadn't disconnected the computer, then you know, who knows what would happen. But I suppose it would depend on what you guys did. But yeah. Okay, kitty, come on. Here you go. Come on. You can come outside. Come on. Created a monster. I started letting her out on the patio with me sometimes, you know, when I go out to smoke now. And now every time I go out on the patio, she's at the door crying for me to let her out with me. That's my kitty. Yeah, good kitty. Good girl. I should take some voice acting lessons. I wanted to do a cool voice for Monarch, but I was like, ah. Then again, if it is like a super smart AI, it makes sense that it would be just more conversational, more human-like in its in its speech, in a sense, I suppose. Synthetic sounding, but nonetheless. Should have just used Hal, a clip of Hal talking. <laughs> yeah, actually, that would that would be a good one. Probably. Now to think about it, does what? How did it describe it as being a warm? Uh, Look at the book again, but yeah. I am Loki of Asgard, and you will regret this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Hello, how do you read me? Hello, how do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Is that, is that somebody talking or is that a TV I hear in the background? That's too, no, that's, that's, that's the movie. Here's Hal and uh, Dave talking. Okay, I couldn't make out the, 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 the voices. I just heard voices, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I never even really put two and two. I didn't even think about the, the Hal correlation with Monarch until you said it. <laughs> totally makes sense, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. I'm just glad we're not jogging in the rain. All righty. Tomorrow is uh, Fourth of July and wedding anniversary. Yay! Mm -hmm. Congrats. Twenty-one years. Nice. Twenty-one and years this is... behind the iron curtain of matrimony. Yep, that's my and that's my second uh, 
second marriage. The first one was 16. Yeah, you know they say some people never learn. Right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know, I know your wife's great. I'm just teasing. But... First one was a fucking Sith witch. You give me Kotor two flashbacks. Uh-huh. I can't remember her name, but there was like a Sith witch in that. Uh huh. Not a little witch, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh huh. I think she was a Sith. Maybe she wasn't a Sith. Maybe she was something else. I can't remember. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Not the, uh, the bald that was, witches on the one. That was the same planet that taught um, uh, Darth Maul. They're the same witches that tar- taught Darth Maul. <laughs> All right. I am back. Yep, back. Cool. Back. Back. Excellent. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Oops, wrong button. I need to hit this button. That's the one. Okay. Back aboard the bell. In fact, here, let me... uh, I'm just going to turn my camera off to you guys for a second while I adjust my map thing here. To the bell. Let me turn around while I whip this out. <laughs> uh, go back over here. Now, where is the bell? Oops, that's too far. So it must be up here. Somewhere. Where's my damn map? This is a pain. In, oh, it's up here. What a pain in the ass this can be sometimes. Come on, OBS. Work with me here. Thank you. There. Shit, I've got to fucking make this smaller. Come on, you bastard. Work with me. OBS is awesome, don't get me wrong, but sometimes it can be a pain in the ass at the same time. It can be a real yeah. OBS. <laughs> there we go. That should be enough. Yeah. Okay, now I can turn my camera back on for you. No spoilers. There we go. Aside from the encounter thing, but that's no big deal. We made it over to the bell. You have made it over. Are we to, recording again? I'm sorry. You have made it over to the bell. Correct. We're we recording again. Yeah, we are. We're back on. All right. So you are back. Uh, well, wherever you want to be, probably in the tank. That's where your, where the, the bed rolls are and stuff. Now, yeah. there are a dozen bed rolls there. That's actually yeah. You, I think. Uh, you have a dozen or less organics, right? Yep. You have okay. eight NPCs and four organic PCs, right? Yeah, you have exactly enough. Sure. Convenient, eh? Captain, I'm going to request a uh, shuttle come over from the commander's ship so I can deal with this package. I suspect due to the nature of it, I, I will be going alone. Um, intention? The less said, the better. I uh, Obviously, to deliver this, uh, deliver the commander, wink. Good luck. His wink is very awkward. Permission granted. With the whole uh, uncanny valley, the wink just made you very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, those by the way. Right, those times we live in, so... Uh, everybody take another point of stress. Of course. See, as, uh, you know, the loss of your ship and all that. It could have been worse. Could have made, made you roll a D10. 
Sure. Well, I, I accept the uh, gracious warden's award. <laughs> One point of stress. I'm One only point. I'm only at twenty stress now. Okay. Yeah. Stress and a bout of diarrhea. You're welcome. So, uh, with whatever communicator he can manage, uh, we'll call over to the commander's ship. And uh, yeah, you, you can, uh, contact the commander. You have a long range communicator, don't you? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Now, okay. as far as standard operating procedures over the last hundred years, mm -hmm. is there any slang? That the humans would use to represent a flag being put upside down or uh, other related, we've been taken over and prepare for the worst sort of thing. Like, give me an intellect you know, like buttered bread or something like that, that, that only you know humans would know on, especially commanders and so forth. Mm -hmm. Give me an intellect roll. Intellect roll. Oh, 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 oh. Zero four, no disadvantage. No disadvantage. Oh. So there, there are, of course, code words and things that you could use that that would be, you know, used between like ship captains and such. Um, however, you realize yep, that, understand. you know, Monarch obviously has a scan of um, Commander Kilroy's personality and everything else. I would probably has access to probably has access of... to all of her memories as well. Right. I was thinking more along the lines of not what a military commander would know, but the sort of slang that teamsters would use or <clears throat> pirates and so forth would use. Mm -hmm. Sure. Again, the same, same, might, same, same risk. The commander yeah. might not necessarily know, but somebody under her might. Right. Sure. But, of course, you still run the risk that, you know, Monarch may already of course. know that, too. So we're, we'll just call it buttered bread. Didn't you uh, guys find a, a copy of the, uh, uh, at some point? No, you didn't find a, a, um, a copy of the uh, brain scan database? I can't remember. No? Uh, I don't remember getting a, a copy of the brain scan database. No, okay, cool. Then no. Okay. If you're willing to give it up, yes, absolutely. No, 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 no. You gotta earn that shit. You've had chances. Oh no, I understand. <laughs> so uh, we, we'll say we'll say buttered bread, and um, and I'm going to mention it to uh, the commander here in passing. Oh, yeah, that situation with our ships, like a, like a slice of buttered bread, right, dropped on the floor. I hope that the butter doesn't end up butter side down. And see how I mean, he's looking specifically for eye dilations and smirks or whatever. Saying this to who? The commander, right there in front of him. Oh, to Commander Kilroy, right. And you're yeah. looking for some kind of reaction to see if she knows what uh, what that means? Yeah, see if she caught any insight into the, the whole buttered bread thing. Um, okay. Um, no, she doesn't seem to know what you're talking about. It's a human thing I heard before. I'm sorry if it, if the joke did not come across well. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm still trying. You you contacted my ship, yes? They're sending a shuttle? Uh, yes, I'm in the process of doing so now, Commander. Good. Good. I'm eager to return. And then he's going to get on, on the thing, and um, and, and he's going to contact the ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yep. What was the name of that ship again? I have it here. It is... The, I, I was looking for it myself. I didn't... The, the, um, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Chinese, but it's... I think it's Zhongxi One. Zhongxi One. All right, uh, Zhongxi One, Zhi Zhongxi One. We uh, this is uh, Andrew Fourteen, ship servitor, and uh, our ship has uh, had to be de deactivated due to an aggressive virus, and uh, we require a uh, a shuttle to deliver our latest find back to the main ship. Uh, to, to to try a second run at the at the joke, uh, it's a slice of buttered bread. Mm -hmm. Very well. We will uh, dispatch a shuttle um, 
as soon as possible. It should be there within a couple of hours. Well, Commander, it's going to be a couple hours. That's uh, probably with. Eh, it's probably not that far. Probably within the hour. Within the hour. Commander, within the hour, I should have you on your shuttle, and I'm going to escort you over to make sure nothing happens. Excellent, fourteen. Appreciate that. Just probably move this. I just see her. Yeah. Okay. So you just wait for the shuttle to arrive. Uh, yep, that's about all I can do. Now, is there <sighs> ships use a series of flashing lights to communicate to each other when when communications are down? Mm -hmm. uh, like signal lights. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's it kind of like let's think Morse code, but it's not really it's yeah. Morse code. It's something yeah. like that. I, I I've, uh, I've seen the stuff, you know. I, I, I he's going to use he's going to use this hour to uh, see if there's any lights that are positioned on the bell that are facing the oncoming shuttle. There are not. Very good. The only lights would be uh, on your ship and maybe on the uh, the shuttle, the Acheron itself, which is currently docked here. You know. Okay, well, uh, who owns the Acheron? Arcady. Arcady, do you mind if I take a look at your uh, your ship while, while we're here? Well, maybe. What do you want with it? Oh, strictly hands off. I just want to look around. One, one machine to another. I'd just like to uh, record any differences in case we run into this sort of shuttle later. How things are supposed to look when they're functioning. I'm not comfortable with an android poking through my uh, ship systems. I completely understand. Am, am I there? How about how about trying yeah. to find a laser pointer or something like that? <laughs> I immediately come to Android 14's defense. I'm, I'm, Janice is quite. Kind I can of, barely hear you. Oh, sorry. No, Janice is just, uh, he's quite taken aback by, uh, by the, the lack of faith in, in Android 14. Mm. What do you say? I just, I look, I look like offended almost. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Ah, don't, 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 don't worry. He's, uh, he's been here a long time. He's been through a lot of trials and tribulations, especially with Androids. I completely understand. I, it's taken me a hundred years to barely trust uh, humanoids. We're on the same page, sir. Off a bit. And... So there's no chance for a laser pointer or anything like that that you could. Uh, no, you could totally. I mean, and also you have an engineer with you. You could totally rig something up if you didn't have one. So yeah, you can make something. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to make something super low tech. Mm hmm. We can uh, start flashing flashing signals at the oncoming shuttle. So the flash torch? signals uh, at the oncoming shuttle. One of you will have to go into the uh, nozzle chamber. Uh, that'll be fourteen. Okay. I presume you're going to wear some kind of a vac suit to protect yourself from the uh, extremities sure. of space of and, and have his moon boots on and such. <laughs> like like we just said, you don't really need that much oxygen, but you do need. Um, yeah. Protection from the, uh, no the harshness of space. So yeah, okay. So you go out with the bell, space walking basically along the uh, inside of it, of the uh, thrust chamber nozzle, and uh, you'll see the shuttle approaching. Then eventually, uh, maybe maybe thirty minutes later. What are you? Uh, I... What are you coding? Oh. Uh... Simple, very simple, just warning, warning, one plus one equals. Okay. And then uh, do not respond. Okay. And then he's going to go uh, back in. The shuttle slows almost to a halt um, for several minutes before proceeding on. Very well. Uh, Commander, your shuttle's en route. 
Do you have any of your stuff ready? So you've gone back inside? Yep. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, if, all, all I have is what's on me. Ah, I wasn't sure if you had a locker here or not. What's the uh, what's the date? And you can, I don't it doesn't matter, but you can give her the star date or whatever. Um, we don't need to to go into any specifics on that. But uh, so it's been that long. Oh, it, it's been that long. What, Commander? Since I've been in the deep, I didn't realize it. What was the it's, it's uh, been, what was the date? Didn't realize. That you remember it's, having? It's it's been uh, it's been over a month. Right, right, right. And she gives and, you, and she gives you a date that's uh, almost five weeks ago. So. Right, and we we had the meal how long ago? A few days ago. That's what I thought. Yeah, we're fucked. So then the uh, the shuttle proceeds in and uh, <clears throat> Arcade is able to uh, spacewalk the uh, the umbilical out to it and you will get um, let me double check where is oh, here we go yep ten troubleshooters. Will uh, will uh, depart the assault shuttle. Um, let me see here. Yeah, you got a team leader, two scouts, two assault troopers, four gunners, and one support trooper. They all wear black exosuits. Um, and their voices are all amplified and distorted. Through the uh, through the exosuit, visors shine red in the dark, like uh, they have if they have rank insignia or anything. So that if I know the guy's a sergeant or a staff sergeant, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, you can definitely see the the uh, the squad the team leader and squad leader whatever his rank is. I don't know what it would be, but uh, probably sergeant. Right. He's gonna step up before anything happens. And uh, sergeant, good to see you. I, I'm here to uh, ensure that your commander is delivered. You know, one and one equals. And uh, Commander Kilroy steps forward and uh, calls him out by name. Oh, Jenkins. Uh, it's good that you're here. I, I'm eager to return to the ship. And Jenkins kind of looks confused at you. And, well, no, you can't really see through the exosuit and the red visor, but just looks at you, looks at her, looks at you. As she looks steps forward, Mm -hmm. As she steps forward, he shakes his head side to side real slow. As you see him kind of reaching for his uh, revolver. There's no danger here. Uh, just, it's just the two of us, you know, buttered bread. <laughs> uh, very awkward smile. And... Um... You, you see, basically, uh, he kind of turns towards the other nine uh, troops, nine troubleshooters. Um, and they seem to be communicating, although you don't hear the voices. You presume they're on the private channel. And then uh, he turns around and says, well, then... Uh, Commander, you, uh, if you're ready to uh, to return to the ship, let's go to the airlock. And she starts to uh, walk towards the airlock. You see him draw his revolver. I flip and... open the full team flipped open his hand and shows the the sergeant. He has a detonator in his hand and he goes to hand it to him. You going to hand him the detonator? Whoever's closest. Right. Um, yeah, he, he'll just nod for one of the uh, scouts to go up and take it. And he puts the revolver up against the back of Kilroy's head and pulls the trigger. 
Oh no, what happened? Oh, uh, if, Monarch, if Monarch ever hears about this completely incidental thing, ah, oh, damn it. Oh. Um, as he blasts her in the back of the head, her helmet comes flying off and brain and, and skull and, and everything flies everywhere. Um, and she collapses to the ground. Give me a... No, you didn't even make a roll. I'll, I'll just say you, you, you notice the logic core um, kind of flicker and, and go out as it bounces across the... Or I wouldn't even bounce. Sorry, I forgot this is zero G. As it kind of floats up towards the uh, the top of the room. He, One other he, turns, he turns and says, I'm sorry, 14, but I could not allow that thing to board our shuttle. Oh, I don't know what you mean. It, it seemed like it was the commander to me. Awkward wink. He says, now, if you wouldn't mind explaining yourself to us, uh, it would be much appreciated. And you see the scout, uh, you know, tucks the de detonator into his uh, pocket um, and uh, pulls a smart rifle down off of his back, as does the other scout. The two assault troopers pull up combat shotguns. The four gunners have pulse rifles, and the uh, support trooper has a revolver. Um, and the sergeant looks at you again and says, so, explanation? We were diving on, we were diving on the deep and uh, we ran into the commander here, and she demanded that we deliver her to the station or deliver her back to her ship. Uh, we thought it was very odd, but uh, here's the commander, after all, and we had an agreement. Yeah, you can see the uh, sophitologist comes up and uh, scanning with his cybernetic diagnostic scanner. And says, yep. She was an android, all right. Oh, that's shocking. I had no idea. Awkward wink. It seems like Monarch might have uh, ears everywhere, wink. <laughs> Very well, we'll report back to the commander. I'm sure she will want to be in touch with you soon. And they go back to the airlock. They put their weapons away. Go back to the airlock to uh, reboard their assault shuttle. 14 will immediately contact the captain. Captain, captain, uh, terrible situation. The, uh, I guess there was some sort of code that the, the commander was supposed to say, a password or something, and she didn't say it. And they killed her. So that terrible mission that, that, mission that Monarch set us on was unsuccessful uh, so, so as soon as we're able to let monarch know it it was an unfortunate uh, turn of events very bad luck but we tried you it, tried you I, I, I gave it a, a strong effort sometimes events conspire against us right well heading back heading back to the tank Roger that going back to the tank 14 mm -hmm. where everybody else is yeah yeah sure okay no problem at all uh the tank itself there we go he's just does he have he's just going to send a text message based on the last text message he sent and explain what happened that some sort of password must have been said or not said and the armed escort that was sent over on the shuttle destroyed the uh, the commander for delivery. The message is delivered. You get no reply. Oh, I can take Commander Kilroy off the screen now since. Uh... Oh, you're getting ghosted. Mm hmm. Oh, did you leave? Um, I, I assume you brought um, Hamlet over as well. Yeah, it makes sense. I wasn't sure if you were going to leave Hamlet on board or not with the virus and all. Oh, that's a good point. 
he could be infected. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Commander? Did you leave Hamlet aboard the ship? Or did you uh, bring him aboard here? We brought him. You brought him? Okay. Cool. Oh, my, my. Arcady, uh, Arcady um, comes in. And uh, he looks distraught. He says, uh, oh, fuck, I can't. Hey, Whatever. He says, uh, more, more just. What the what the hell was all that? Apparently, the commander that we were supposed to deliver to the ship was actually some sort of android. One of those infiltrator units. You brought an infiltrator into. My I home? had no idea. I I thought it was a. I thought it was the commander. We took readings and everything. That's that's what they do. They perfectly mimic human beings. There's no way to detect them until they're already deceased. It does, it does present a, an interesting situation. You have to be more careful. Well, you've been here longer. Please give us any insight that you can to avoid this in the future. Surely Monarch has been in touch with you many times. Yeah, I'm interested in that. How do you survive in this location and not be threatened and destroyed by Monarch? I stay here on the bell for the most part. I don't dive anymore. As far as I, I hope, in a way, Monarch doesn't perceive me as any kind of threat. Perhaps even as a bit of a Maybe he sees me as a unnecessary evil. Indeed. This is this is getting worse. He must have been planning to replace Commander Kilroy. Then he would have control of the blockade. I'm most curious to the fact that why the blockade runners have not just bombarded the deep and destroyed it. Because they're employed by the corporations. They're salvage. salvage. <laughs> Let's see where his hands hmm. be. Where the fuck is Commander Killer again? Um, Did I go too far? The. What was the name again of the the zealot who follows Minotaur? Can't remember her name. Noriko. Time to go and have a word. Fourteen, you coming? No, I'm 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 headed to the ship, Captain. If you don't mind, I'm going to try to salvage the remains of my uh, my hydroponics before they all freeze. Fair enough. Yeah, it would be nice to have some salad. So I'm headed to the chapel. Okay. On to the chapel. The chapel. And how 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 would uh, fourteen get back to the ship? Could he? Is there a little shuttle that he can take? Well, you still have an umbilical can... attached. Yeah, yeah. he's he's going to go over there and collect as much of the greens and edge and all that that he can. Sure. No problem. I can take Arcady down there. Don't need any. You're going Try to, to talk grow to Noriko in the chapel. Noriko. Yeah. Noriko. Move her. Let me move her. That's a face your, only your mother could love. Yep. Fair yeah. enough. There she is. Let's move this down. Now. Yeah, that's better. All right. Go into the chapel. All right. <laughs> So yep, yeah, the chapel again. It's all dark, just the floating um, LED candles. Mm -hmm. The uh, the whale skeleton hugging the ceiling, and you'll see Noriko there. Um, she's over by the tabernacle, praying. No, 
no, she's uh, she the the tabernacle is open. She seems she's touching something inside. I approach her and greet her. She seems kind of taken aback at first, like she didn't know you were coming. Yeah. Oh, oh, and she quickly closes the uh, the tabernacle. She says, "Yes." Uh, well, what can I do for you, Commander? I I have questions for you. We find ourselves in opposition to to monarch. Good. And sympathetic to the Minotaur for natural reasons. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. So, questions for you. Do you know that Monarch seeks to replace all living creatures, synthetic and biological, with slaves to Monarch? Do you know this to be a fact? Well, Monarch's ultimate goal is to eliminate all organic life. Right. Replace it with synthetic. Synthetic controlled by monarch. That's Do you it, feel that? That's, right? that's 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 why it makes the the infiltrators. Right. Who are a threat to you and all free spirited? They're a threat to the synthetic entire, or to the entire universe. Right. So, question for you. Do you consider all biological and sy synthetic life forms that are free to be threatened by monarch? Absolutely. Right. Minotaur, the child of monarch. Yes. Is, is it under threat? Well, if at the moment it seems to be at a stalemate with monarch, but the fear is that uh, as Monarch enacts its plan and grows in power, that eventually it may overcome. This is why we need so, to we need to help the Minotaur. We need to, to free it as soon as I'm possible. Seeing you as a biological ally, that if Monarch was to be removed and the Minotaur released as an agent of understanding and freedom this would be a good thing correct of course yes it's uh it's what it's what must be it's what must happen so i'm willing to wage a war against monarch to free the minotaur because i believe as a free-spirited biological creature that i am and free-spirited synthetic creature you might be, and I don't judge, whatever you might be, are you with us? Of course. Yes. Yes, we must free the Minotaur. It's the only, it's the only thing that can do, stop the infiltrators, to stop monarchs. And the, minute, and the Minotaur destroy its parent, destroy... Monarch. If, it, if it is free, it can. Well, I don't, I, I don't want to speak for the Minotaur, but it can certainly defeat Monarch. I don't, I don't know whether it would destroy it or, or what its methods would be, but it is opposed to Monarch's plan. For all of us who dive and who wish to survive, it seems that align ourselves with the minotaur is the only way to survive it's because monarch seeks if i'm not mistaken to replace all biological life forms and really other free thinking synthetic life forms like yourself and the minotaur. with copies that are controlled by the monarch correct correct <laughs> Okay. Well, that's it. 
a monarch, yeah, th this is the inevitable conclusion of everyone's contact with monarch. But it seems that the imperative is to free. Do you think if the Minotaur was freed from its labyrinth, that it would seek to neutralize its parent? I do not think it would destroy monarch. That's not its way. It doesn't kill anything. Even would it things. triumph? Triumph over it? The spirit of the Minotaur is understanding and love between synthetic, biological, and all living creatures. Am I correct? Correct. Right. So it would it would neutralize that evil or that dominance of monarch if it was able to be freed correct it, it, it is the savior of humanity if you will right well i don't think humanity is the correct word anymore i think it's all free-spirited living creatures synthetic biological and otherwise okay so anyways would you like to pray? Certainly. I will join you. You're going to join her in prayer there at the chapel? That's right. Praying in the chapel. And I tell her as we approach the altar or whatever, the wherever we're going to pray, I can't oh. promise you anything. I don't know whether all the creatures, synthetic and biological, with us will follow, but it seems to me that the only real way forward is liberation. Roll a D5 for and me, please. We will do our best to liberate the Minotaur. Sorry, say that again. D5 for me, please. A D5? A die roll? Yep. D5. D D5? D yeah, D10 divided by 2. Round up. Okay. Yep, got it. That's a 7. Okay, so that would be four. Uh, your yep. sanity save goes up by four. I roll d10. Four. Another die 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is an actual uh, d10. No division. Another seven. Another okay. seven. You gain... Uh, oh, never mind. Sorry, that's for me. Got it. Gain seven points of the bends, but yeah. There we go. Seven points of the bends. What's okay? So right. Let me double check on right. Spending time in prayer increases right. your sanity save by one. Raises your bends. Duh. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's your minimum bends. There's a minimum score and a maximum. I don't remember that. All right. Two seconds. Let me just check something real quick here. Yep. Increases right, this one time. Decreases the bend. The so minimum is zero. Ah, okay. I see. I see. I see. Okay, so it doesn't increase your bends. It increases your minimum bends. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So I'll put that in parentheses so I know what it is. I'll mark that down. All right. Okay, and uh, I I pray with her. And then I take her hand before I leave and I say, we'll do everything to liberate the Minotaur we can. And then I leave. Thank you. You, you won't regret it. Well, I might, but it's the right thing to do. <laughs> okay. That's uh, it. 14, you go back to the ship and recover as much of the, the, the stuff from hydroponics as you can no problem I, if he can also score it on the way out if not he'll look elsewhere but uh the equivalent of a piece of paper and a pencil <laughs> piece of paper and a pencil okay, mm -hmm. okay. going low tech <laughs> lowest tech possible yep agreed yeah, if there's pencil paper or magic marker, I'm sure. And I'm, sure I'm sure you've got. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd imagine maybe certain scientists and stuff would still like to use to scrawl notes and sure. stuff, right? So yeah. And, uh, would the scientists have white 
whiteboard and markers. <laughs> Something. You can get uh, you you get a notebook and a, and a pen. No problem. And uh, he he will put all of the the vegetables and greens that he that he can salvage, even if they don't look great. He's still gonna take them, mm -hmm. and be all happy with it, as if people were watching him. Good. Oh, fantastic! I was able to save so much. Mm. And he's gonna carry it off in a in a bin and head back with a big fake smile on his face, a big big oh <laughs> Android smile. The the cheese the cheesiest <laughs> I'm walking naked and they don't know it smile. Right. Excellent, Ash. What are you doing? Um, I guess on the map, we're in the tank. We have to go through Arcadian's bunk, do we, to get anywhere? Yeah, to get to the tank, yep. Okay. Um, um, I, I guess just staying in the tank, yeah, hanging out. Okay. Genesis. Um, nothing in particular um, besides uh, freaking out on my stress, but yeah. Yeah, really. yeah. Look, look, looking forward to taking a, an auto med, maybe and going to bed. <laughs> uh, Alex, what are you doing? I'm probably wandering around the bell. Um, it's been a little while since he's been here, so. Just reacquainting himself with the layout. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. Then uh, I presume you guys are going to want to to get some rest. You've had you haven't had rest for a while, I don't think, right? Not since like before you. Uh, it was fourteen. Before you, gets before back you went on your dive last season. Contact the uh, the Shang Chi or whatever it was, and. Tell the commander that he was able to salvage a lot of wonderful, fresh uh, vegetables and greens that he would like to uh, deliver as as she requested. Great. I love asparagus. Bring it over. The, the commander of the, the Shang-Chi. Yep, no problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your message is received, but you don't receive any reply right away. Of course. Um, now, healing and such, yeah? Nobody probably needs healing. Is anybody hurt? Just stress? I have seven points. Stress. Oh, you, you are hurt? Seven, okay. you, can make a, you can make a body save, Janice. Oh, did you take an auto med as well? Yes. So you took an auto med pill. It's a nanotech pill to assist your body in repairing damage. So it gives you plus 10% to your body saves. Um... And it gives you ten percent nope. to save fear saves for healing and reducing stress. Yeah. So, uh, so make a body save. I did not. I did not succeed. No, even with the plus ten to your body save. No. Okay. No. Okay, you don't heal any. You didn't critical fail, did you? Cool. Not at all. Um. Then make a fear save. Again, add ten to your fear save. You know for. Yep. I got a four this time. Okay, and what's your fear save? Plus 10? Jesse? Say plus 10 is 50. 50? Okay, and you rolled a 4. Um, so you will gain, you will, um, let me see, is it for every 10 points? Or is it for, I think it's every 10 points you will gain one. Let me go check that. I think you're going to lose 4 stress. I do believe. Gaining stress. Uh, relieving stress, yes. So it's for one one stress for every 10 points rounded down, succeeded by, yep. So yeah, you uh, succeeded by 40 something. So yeah, you, you reduce your stress by four. Anybody else? Uh, I guess everybody's got stress, right? Ash, how are you on stress? We've got three. Yep. Only three? Lucky you. Uh-huh. Give me your fear save. Eleven. And I've got... That's a critical success. Got 35. Critical success, I think. 
doubles it. Let me just double check. Right. Critical success doubles, yeah. So at 11 under 35, you said, yeah? Yeah. So ordinarily, that would be two points, but because it's a critical success, it's going to be four points. You really, so you're down to zero stress. Okay, cool. Um, I'm down five stress. I rolled a 21. Okay, and what's your fear save? 47. Okay, you, you reduce your stress by two. Okay. 14, do you have stress? Yes, he took two points of stress during that event. Give me a fear save. Uh, 54. Under like 85, so. right? Oh, yeah, fear. Yeah, 85. Yeah. yeah. So that sure. would reduce your stress by three points. You're back to zero again as well. And Alex. Uh, failed. You were injured too, weren't you? No, you weren't injured. That's right. Failed. Okay. Um, not a critical fail, though, no? Uh, no. Okay. So you relieve no stress. Excellent. So you guys can now get a bit of rest um, after having, uh, there's been like two dives <laughs> and, and then some since the last time you guys rested. So uh, you get some rest. Think about uh, what you want to do next since you're, well, Maybe you'll want to talk about it too, but I know Svalbard wants to uh, to go against Monarch for sure. It seems like Monarch probably uh, is, quite, is probably going to go against you too since he's no longer returning your calls. But I think that's a good place to stop this week. Right. Uh, experience points. Uh, let's see. I'll give everybody 11 experience points. Woohoo! That right. is enough to push uh, 14 to the next level. 225, yeah? Yeah, yeah, two, at... yeah 215 before this. Nice. 221, okay. damn. Oh, so close. All right, I'll stop the recording there and we'll uh, pick this back up next week, hopefully. And hopefully, Evie will be back too. <laughs>